Hi, everyone. I'm Gold Derby News and Features Editor Ray Richmond, and I'm here today with Drew Wade, who served as the Director of Photography on Season 1 of the FX on Hulu series The Bear, and who I understand is also back for Season 2 that begins streaming June 22 on Hulu, all 10 episodes. Um, Drew, let's start by talking about the fact your longtime friends with the show's creator and executive producer, um, Chris Storer, and how The Bear was originally conceived as a feature is that Correct. right and yes. almost like it's almost like the show was shot like eight mini movies so that's not a big surprise no no chris and i go back a long time uh i couldn't tell you exactly it's probably 12 plus years we've been doing small projects basically together exclusively for a long long time um i feel like i know him better than anyone else so when it comes to a show like this we really gel in a sense that there's we don't really need to talk about much we know we know the story and we know what's going on and he does his thing i do mine and we trust each other immensely um he wrote this as a movie long time ago um i remember reading the original screenplay um i don't know eight or nine years ago and it kind of went around and then it disappeared and then it was a couple of years ago that he's like i think i'm going to turn into a mini series um fx is interested in and i'm like well that's exciting you know i always felt like there was more to be said than you know what the the movie was and i think the pilot really kind of encompassed what the movie was and from there on he really got to build this map of world which um i like to say now that everyone knows being 22nd you'll get a really feel the expansion of the bear world in season two and um but what season one did was just a beautiful kind of story about a few people in a very small place and the chaos and, and love and emotions that happen in there. Um, so we're, we're happy to that Chris got to make this role bigger than it was originally. Uh, Drew, the pace of the show is by its design, this incredibly frenetic, intense and chaotic show. Um, and your camera work was a big part of that. Talk about how you work to create that sense of claustrophobia and can the kind of controlled mayhem. <clears throat> Yeah, it is. Uh, it certainly is that way. And the funny thing is, is the creation, the onset feel and production of what we do, we kind of, it feels a little bit of the opposite. We, we work in a very controlled manner that on camera comes off a lot more intense, but we try to uh, slow things down a little bit on set, even though our, our pacing on every day is very fast. We shoot a lot of pages. Um, we're not shooting a ton of takes and it's it's a lot of capturing live moments and it comes from a lot of my experience that chris and i had doing comedy specials where we would run eight or nine cameras and we understood that we only had one shot to tell a story and so a lot of that comes from that that background we had there um in in the sense of the bear i treated the show kind of like two two different camera departments i had you know my my a camera and b camera and the A camera was uh, our story storyteller and it constantly moved through the space and traveled with Carmi or traveled with Sydney through the kitchen and from the front of house and back house. And we really designed the scenes to feel like they never needed to cut. And then the second camera, the B camera was our, our big zoom lens. It was his, his job was literally to build and design the editorial side of things. So then when they got to edit, Chris had the choice of either, well, this scene really works great without cutting. We want to feel that that drive and we want to feel what it takes for somebody to walk, go through the kitchen and do everything. And then this next scene, well, I want this one to feel chaotic. And so it was like we shot everything very similar, but they allowed in post to be able to choose, well, how much of the big long zoom and capturing all the little finesse of the macro moments and the tight faces and following the action from here to here. And so it really was about... Um, giving a lot of creative freedom to two camera operators who are shooting the same show, but, sh but looking at them from a kind of two different perspectives and those perspectives came together so nicely in editorial. I, I read the entire stage was built so a dolly could run without track. How did, yes. how did that help set you free when shooting the show? Is, is it, it tough is. to capture all that movement? No. So uh, it was something that I asked for early on. I wanted to be able to go from the dining room to the front of house to the kitchen and be able to do it all in a dolly. I personally think a dolly is more filmic. It feels more like 
the films that Chris and I love from the 90s and, you know, the old Scorsese and the Michael Mann and all that kind of stuff. And so we didn't want it to be a study cam show. And for me to do Dolly the way that the show was running, I needed every floor and transition to be smooth. So the production designer was able to put together, a, a, you know, and, and construction, build us a zero transition stage. And I ran the whole A camera on a dolly on a remote head. So the dolly grip didn't actually have to push our operator on either. So it was a lighter system. It was a small PV4. And he was able to, uh, we shot 360 in there. And he was able to fly around on the dolly, tracking and following in these very complex moves. And it, it really pays off. It allows us to, you know, on a stage, which stages can feel very much like a stage, if not shot correctly, this allowed us to go through the whole space and really get the freedom of movement and not worry about cutting because you're going from one part of the stage to the next. Um, and, you know, all we had to worry about was hiding the V camera somewhere. And, you know, and it was a matter of him being able to, again, on 11 to 1 zoom at 400 millimeters, jumping out of the way or hiding around the corner while the camera flies by and then jumping back in and getting the second half of the scene or whatever it was. And it worked great. Yeah, and you're talking about the A and the B. Um, it's yeah. it's like it's like your shots outside the kitchen look and feel obviously much calmer and more settled compared with the chaos inside. That had to be by design. It's like you're probably I imagine you're cognizant of like not risking overwhelming the audience with all that. With with it was a yeah. Intensity. It was a very early on conversation that Chris and I had, and he he brought it to me, and I 100% agree with him. Is that once that we left that kitchen the world needed to feel very singular and needed to be from one perspective. And that felt like we focused more on one camera capture once we left the stage. And on top of that, if the camera did move, it moved in a very slow manner, very, you know, not taking the attention out of what we would do because we needed the audience to have those lulls, those slower moments because of how fast the kitchen was. We needed the location work and, the outside the kitchen work to feel uh, a little almost like the other side of the world, like it needed to feel different. And so, yeah, we, we approached it in a way um, that, that I'm glad you, you picked up on it. It does. It's, it's, it's supposed to have a, a different uh, kind of pace to it. You also do this amazing job of kind of shooting the food in, in the Thank show. You. I, some people, it's so funny. Some people Drew that I know are like, Oh my God, I so, I so want an Italian beef. And other people are like, Ugh, oh, my God, it's like it's grease everywhere and sweat and grime. Yeah. But it, it's, it, it looks like you had almost kind of a kind of a history and an experience with shooting food the way you guys did it. It was almost it was almost it was beautiful in its own way. You, I'm sure you have experience shooting that. I do. I spent a long time as a commercial uh, cinematographer doing food work in Chicago for companies like McDonald's and KFC and you know, the list goes on. And then Chris and I actually have an experience, uh, a, a long term experience shooting like in house videos for people like Thomas Keller in the French Laundry and Christopher Costow Meadowood and a lot of two and three star Michelin restaurants. So we have been around this kind of high stakes, high level kitchen for the last decade, kind of going in. And we just jump right in there and I think the biggest thing that we wanted to do with the food was is not to go away from that style of like crashing into the food and making it feel as real and possible and not we didn't want it to feel but hyper stylized like what you see on Netflix and you know that kind of what we love but we wanted to have its own its own feel and its own tone and um you know shooting on like a 400 millimeter of a diopter on it people would think is absolutely crazy but that gets you these like super macro close-ups but you still can kind of like crash zoom into it so like we really like this idea of like phonetic energy through the zoom and finding the mo the shots and just being outside the normal did i see that, that it only took you 27 days to shoot episodes two through eight that's um, correct. Yeah, that's we, we rep, yeah ridiculously <laughs> efficient. <laughs> it is. It was. Um, I started. I we wanted to be uh, the backup. I needed to be efficient for Chris. I want. I knew that he his. It's so much important for him. His story, 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 as we all like to hear. But he truly feels that way in a sense that like I needed to be up and ready every morning at call time. I needed to have all my stage lights, everything is programmed, everything's LED. Um, I could flip from day to 
night within five minutes. Like it was all about efficiency. So what a normal show would spend an hour to whatever between scenes or setups and, you know, turning around to relight coverage. We weren't that show. We were a fully lit set that could shoot 360 at all times. Everything was practical based lighting with the exception of a few, you know, hero tubes that would come in for, for eye lights, but they were designed to be shot. So we never were waiting on lighting or stands in the way or, you know, any of that kind of nature. So we were fast. Wow. I wouldn't, I would not have guessed that. I would have guessed that this was so painstaking just based on the way it came across, but to that end, uh, let's move on to discuss episode seven sure. uh, review, the one everyone is still talking about. You plotted out the majority of the episode is this single unbroken 18 minute real time shot. Yes. How did that idea come to be? I, I I guess it had to, it originated with Chris. It is. Yeah. So he came to me around episode three or four during the shoot. So obviously, you know, we're a couple of weeks in and he's like, I have this idea. What do you think of it? And we and him, me and him have always talked about extended scenes or extended shots and it never really was the idea of like could we do an entire episode or whatever it was but we always pushed for this idea of uh, you know theater capturing theater how long can it go before it, the audience gets taken away and so he's like I think if I rewrite seven I can do it or maybe there's a cut somewhere he's like I, he couldn't figure out if there was maybe a cut in the middle there's two pieces and you know me as a type of I like to go for it. I'm like, no, don't get rid of the cuts, fix, figure it out. I'll figure out the camera side of things. It'll work. Um, and so he, he rewrote it. The actors all were very nervous about it. So, you know, they spent a day, I think we spent three days total to accomplish this, this oneer. you know, day one was a round table with the actors while I, Kind of started making sure, you know, pre-lighting some, some, you know, lighting key stuff and some camera stuff and all that kind of thing. While day two, the actors put it on the feed and started walking the space. And, you know, Chris did an excellent job of like breaking the scene into sections. And then where does each section work within this kit through the whole restaurant? And then making sure that each section kind of connected to the next one. So it always felt like, we are traveling through this space and it never, you know, the, the key that me and my operator Gary Maloof wanted to do is making sure that we never move the camera unless it's motivated by somebody else moving, pulling us somewhere, right? Because the moment we move without them, then the audience could get taken out. It doesn't feel natural. So I think it only happens once within the however many minutes it is, but the, you know, day two comes about, we start walking through it, by the end of day two, the actors know they're blocking the pacing. They're going about full speed. And we never actually put a camera up on day two. I think we were doing it with an iPhone at that point, just feeling the pacing, feeling the speed, allowing our boom operator and our dolly grip, just understanding where we're moving and understanding that speed as well. Come day three, we do the first take, you know, call time's probably 7 a.m. We do the first shot at 8, and I don't know how it happens, but they circle it. They think it's good enough for air. And this is our first camera, sh camera you know, attempt at it. Um, no focus problems, no blocking problems, frames work. Like, it was, I don't know, it, it just happened. Literally, um, on, your, on your, first, your first take, bam. First take, bam. You know, I you know it's funny because i get to take a lot of credit for this but there's so many people involved that to do this it's i i really don't matter much but you know like my gaffer and his dimming board operator set up two boards so they both can live light the whole thing because we had to adjust and shape the light while they're moving through the space um you know our boom operator didn't have a single boom in the shot i don't know how he did that for 18 minutes um, my camera operator Gary Maloof is a pure genius. Everyone thought it was steady cam. It's handheld. Um, you know, it, my focus puller, Matt Rosick, is I arguably think one of the best in the business. He did not have a single focus miss. He was actually making focus creative choices, you know, 10 minutes in, which could have completely ruined the take. And he's making the choice. It's correct for the creativity and he's nailing it. It's just like, 
there's things and people who came together that this wouldn't be possible without. You talk about everybody having to be on their game and cognizant of everything. That had to be yeah. like the most nervous 18 minutes of your life. It is. It's it, it's very uh, the relief once we called cut to imagine an entire set of a hundred people applauding as loud as you you could hear is something that I've never experienced in my life. And we did it five times. And the amount of applause and the amount of hugs and the you know it's just like. It is an experience that I wish everyone can try to be a part of one day, but it truly is, is it, it, it's something completely different than normal production. Just to get all the actors on, um, you know, yeah. and, to be, and to be on their game, forgetting all of the, all of the crew members and everybody yeah. that's involved in the shoot, just to get all the actors hitting all their marks exactly right. Um, I do, I, I think it's an incredible thing. It's like putting on a stage play that you've rehearsed for three days. Yeah. Yes. And that's what the actors would talk about. They thought this was the most exciting thing that they could do as an actor. They've never felt so free because they're not, they're not, they're acting off camera. And I think a lot of times like that is kind of goes away. And so now, even if the camera's flying out front in the front of house, they're still acting in the kitchen. They're still like actually acting as their character progressing what needs to happen in the kitchen. So when the camera comes back in, it's now moved forward in time. And so like, it is just an incredible piece of machinery that we all put together and just, you know, I don't, I don't remember what take we use, but like the, the fact that we did five takes and then went to lunch and we were done is just, it's crazy. And it was designed with no cuts, but you, you, you had some, you had a few, potential uh cuts that you could have made if you had to um yes no it was no we committed to no cuts about a week before we shot it the the original concept to chris was is that it could have been a couple cuts but no we committed to doing this i think there was fail safes after the first time like once we saw it for the first time we knew that this this works so the fail safes went out the window and we committed completely to this being a no cut which is the arable the arable episode is there's zero cuts there's no cleanups there's nothing wow wow well congratulations <clears throat> it's just it's breathtaking to watch um and thank you it's 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 the thing is you can tell that there were no cuts it's not like oh you know wow it's interesting it's interesting to see this it looks like they could have cut here they could have cut here you can tell it's what just one continuous shot thank you yeah we're very proud of it and um you know we certainly feel like there's a lot of hype going into season two. So hopefully people will be excited about maybe something happening. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, I would imagine, you know, you've set this amazing benchmark through from season yeah. one. And now now it's sort of like, that's the thing about being a success. Okay, now can you up your game a little bit for season two? It is, that's the thing. It's like Chris and I talked about going into season two. What do we have to do to maintain this this kind of visual benchmark that we did in season one and we feel coming out of it, you know, I'm a couple of weeks out from wrapping season two and we feel really good about it. So um, I'm excited for people to see what we came up with again. Is there anything you can tease about season two? Uh, I, I imagine um, trying some stuff that's really just as ambitious as the season is the single it's, take episode or close yeah, to it? There's, there's, yeah, there's certainly another ambitious attempt in season two. And um, we're two episodes longer. And I think we're bigger. So we're outside the world more. And we have a lot of really beautiful episodes. It's What I like about season two is, is that we really kind of dug deep into some storylines of, of each character and spending time with them. And that allowed us to go into worlds and spaces that we couldn't go in the first season. And so for me, it's just opening up the kind of beauty of what Chicago is. Um, you know, to I grew up just absolutely obsessed with early Michael Mann and uh, John Hughes and this world of Chicago that they created. And so for me, this was my opportunity with Chris and he's another Chicago and for us to bring that world back to, I think, viewers who maybe didn't get to experience the, the John Hugh and, and the you know Michael Mann day, the thief and all that kind of stuff. And so we went big this season. We went really big. 
is this as different an experience as you've had from anything else you've done in your career? It just looks like sort of the ultimate challenge for a cinematographer doing a show like this. Yeah, I would say this is the ultimate challenge in every scenario possible, but it's the most freeing experience I've ever been a part of. Um, every day I would turn to Chris and be like, it's weird that there's no one here telling us what to do or what not to do. And I think when you are making a show like this in a studio like FX, we get to have the playground to ourselves and they know that we're going to produce something that they'll be proud of. And so for us, we're making the work for us and the, the, everything is what we like and what we want it to be. And that is the most freeing experience you can have. With that, um, we're out of time, Drew Wade. Um, thanks so much for your time. Um, I'm a huge fan of the beer, if it isn't already Thank clear. You. Uh, Thank you. you. Know, I'm a big fan of your innovative and uh, riveting cinematography is a big reason why. And uh, take care and good luck uh, going forward with Thank season you. two. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time, Ray. Mm -hmm.